Calico is well known for being a wholesome, kitty-filled adventure, and I didn't expect them to spear off into a digital board game sense, but here we are with the Quilts and Cats of Calico. And this is a digital board game for one to four players, and whilst you may be kind of laughing at the theme, potentially, of it being all wholesome with Quilts and Cats involved, don't be deceived, this is quite a cool game to play because it's simple rules but it's one of those games where you're having to do the best with what you've got and what's available to you and it's very rare you'll ever have all of your stars aligned to have a perfect solution for maximum points and so your strategy is to try and work out what to go for one uh, whilst hoping someone else isn't trying to do the same thing as you play off against either AI bots or other human players, either locally or online. So, how does this game work? At the beginning of each game, you're given a quilt, and it's bare except for some patches around the edges, which you'll see different colours and different patterns. There are six of each, six colours, six patterns, and they'll all be in different patch tiles inside that brown bag on the right hand side of the screen. At the beginning of each game, you will be asked for three different pattern hexagons, and they're always placed into the same spots on your quilt. And you'll see that it's got like AABBCC, or AAABBB, or AABBCD, whatever it is. And what that's attributing to is the different layouts of the six edges around this hexagon needing to be either if it's AAA BBB, it's like having three of one colour and three of another. If it's AABBCC, then it's two of one, two of another and two of a third colour. But it's not just colour you're looking at. Because each of the patches has its own pattern as well, you score more points if you're able to not just match up the colours, but also get two of different patterns as well. Now they don't have to be the same pattern on the same colour, it's just so long as it matches the hexagon as you go around. And this is what I mean by trying to work out at what point do you stop trying to go for perfection and just go for maximising the scores with the patches that are available to you. Because every player is pulling from that brown bag and the three different tiles that are available. So each player will pick one once they've made a move. And if you're busy looking at, I don't know, yellow striped patches, but so is another player, you'll be trying to whip them from each other and then you realise that you've walked yourself into a corner and you'll need to back away from things. So, you'll be hoping that you've not all picked the same thing to go for and if you have, be trying to change your tactics very quickly. But there are a variety of ways to score points through buttons and it's the person that gets the most buttons at the end who wins. So, those three... Um, pattern hexagons that you have has a blue button on which is how much you score if you get th like the colour pattern correct but if you get the colour pattern and the pattern on the patches matched you score the yellow number so the one where you've got say all six colours around the edge you need to have one of each of the six patterns too in order to score the maximum yellow points for that button. The button then gets sewn in to your quilt and you win the points. You can also win points by getting three patches of the same colour touching each other back to back and that will sew on a button of that colour. And you'll see there's a little card just below the um, like discard pile that you can choose from on the right hand side. And that lights up whenever you sew on a button of each of the six colours. If you get all six buttons sewn on, you then get a rainbow button, which is worth, I think, nine points and is quite powerful in this game. And that's a valid way to try and boost up your points if you've buggered up the, the uh, design hexagons in the middle and is quite often a good little side tactic to aim for. The other way how you can also win... Uh, points by getting buttons sewn on is through the cats icons down the left hand side. Now you'll see these cats will be generated and they'll have patterns next to them and it could be that you just need 
three of those pattern next to each other or four of a pattern or it could be that you need to have four in a long line together or five with three in the bottom and two on the top of that same pattern. Whatever it is, you'll then see the button value of it attributed to that cat. And these are the other subliminal ways that you can then score buttons, because when you do that and satisfy that cat, a cat bu uh, badge is kind of then sewn onto your quilt to continue to decorate it, thus making more buttons, thus giving you more points towards winning the game. Now, trying to balance all of this is extremely difficult, and that's why I'm saying, like, you have to pick your tactic depending on what's available to you. Whilst doing all of this, you can turn on and off the ability to have cats wandering around your quilt and being genuinely very cute. And whilst that's very nice to watch, they do get in the way when they start laying down and wanting to be stroked when you're trying to work out like what's the edge of that pattern um, or that quilt so that you can see what the pattern is before you lay down your next tile. So thankfully there's a little night button on the top left hand side that turns it off and all the cats go and get off the quilt and go to sleep up on the top of the screen. <laughs> the beauty of that cat element though and the way how they can score things is that you can custom make your own cats and build your own different uh, arsenal of cats that you can bring into the game so you can design and decorate them you can call them a name you can give them like whatever their skill and button worth is and they become into the cat pool of cards that can be drawn whenever you then play a game and i think that's a fantastic way to add in some customization to a digital board game that you just wouldn't be able to do if this was a physical product nearly as well there's also alongside the ability to play online and locally for one to four players, a story mode too. And this switches up the gameplay slightly from where instead of playing full games, it gives you a mixture of full games and specific puzzles to complete. So it will give you like six tiles and it will say, um, get four badges and a cat badge uh, in these moves. And so you've got to really plan out every single patch perfectly in order to make sure that you hit all of those goals. It's a different pace. I did quite like the graphical style of it. The story seemed a bit strange because you seem to be knitting quilts for war. So quite how wholesome that was, <laughs> entirely sure. But it did offer a different change of pace in terms of gameplay and that I appreciated. I've had great fun with Quilts and Cats of Calico. I think it's a worthy digital board game that people who enjoy casual strategy and also picking your strategy against what other players are gunning for, if you enjoy that in your digital games, I think you'll absolutely love this. Um, really well themed, cosy and cute, lots of kitty fun to be had, and some decent gameplay too. Ruin review will be over at highplaygames.com. Comments and questions, leave them down below. Higher Plane Games is part of the Higher Plane Network, a completely independent media outlet supported by people like you. The goal is to create the best possible content that cultivates a richer indie scene for games as well as music and entertainment. To find out more and to get involved, visit patreon.com forward slash higher plane network. Your support makes all the difference and in return you'll gain access to bonus content and downloads. Thank you for watching.